Hi friends, it's Sarah, the owner and maker behind Multiverse Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today for this very special episode. If you're a new viewer, this is a unique episode. This isn't like my normal, and if you're returning viewers, uh, welcome back. <laughs> this is going to be my special Michigan Fiber Festival of 2023 edition. I'm going to show you guys what I found, the treasures, tell you a little bit about Michigan Fiber Festival this year, and fill you all in. So I loved it. <laughs> well, this is a little short of it. I loved it. Um, I will show you guys my shirt. I usually try to get some festival merchandise, so I'll show you that first, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of it. And I found so many treasures, so many treasures, and I basically found everything I was hoping for, which is amazing. That doesn't always happen. But the one thing that I have found, I haven't gone to many fiber festivals, but Michigan Fiber Festival has a little bit of everything. So whether you're a spinner, weaver, knitter, crocheter, uh, what did I miss? <laughs> There's so many. Um, really, they have a little bit of everything for everyone. So if you're ever trying to find something and you're in this area or live nearby enough that you might make a little weekend trip, I highly recommend it. And I do highly recommend going multiple days. And I'll give you all uh, the reasons why uh, of that as well here. So really exciting. <laughs> so um, just to reiterate, I did go Friday and Saturday this year. Uh, normally I only go Saturdays. So I'm telling you, totally worth it. Um, this is going to be a longer video, so if you want to grab yourself something to drink or just break it up, that's totally fine too. I'm just going to let you guys know that in advance. I should have brought more beverage because I feel like I'm going to be doing a lot of talking. So first of all, um, the reason why I definitely recommend the two-day end of things, if you're someone like myself, I get a little um, overwhelmed might not be the right word, but that's kind of how I feel. I get a little overwhelmed by the whole um, going there, seeing everything, and then obviously I, I want to purchase certain things, but I think I get a little overwhelmed by everything that is there because there's so much to see. And usually when I only go one day, it's very busy. Saturdays are the busiest day that I know of. I've never gone on a Sunday but I've gone on a Friday now, and Fridays have a decent amount of foot traffic, but they are not nearly as busy as Saturdays. Saturdays are the busiest day, which has its own wonderful atmosphere about it. I love it. Um, I still always would want to go on a Saturday, but I do recommend if you can go on a Friday. Um, you could probably get the same thing if you go on a uh, Sunday as well, maybe Saturday and Sunday, but here's why I recommend going Friday and Saturday, because I experienced this. <laughs> So when you go on Fridays, it's uh, a little quieter because obviously not everybody has Friday off. I happen to currently have Fridays off from my full-time job. So that worked out well because then I could go and kind of scope it out. My goal Friday was literally to go to all the booths. Um, if any animals were there, go check out the animals. Most of them were going to arrive on Saturday. So I wanted to just kind of scope out what was there and just see and then not really purchase until Saturday was my goal. Unless I saw something that I had to have, <laughs> I would buy it Friday and then come back Saturday and buy anything else that I just felt I needed to buy and see all the animals. So my goal on Saturday was to um, do, I guess, some of my purchasing, see all the animals, um, go to shearing demonstrations, um, the, um, the sheepdog demonstration, all of that. That was my goal. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my goal through this weekend and really what happened Friday is that worked out really well it, like I said it was quieter so I could actually interact with the people that work there their booths because I find on Saturday it gets so busy that it's hard to interact with people because they want to not only interact with you but they want to interact interact with any patrons that come into their booth so those are potential customers for them and you don't really want to take all their time so I really loved that Friday it was a little quieter so I was able to chat with them a little bit, get some information. Um, being a newer spinner, I got some great tips from a lot of these wonderful people that spin wool and other fibers, and it was very helpful for me. <laughs> so that was awesome. And they were super willing to share information, which I really appreciated. And someone else mentioned something that 
I didn't really go with an agenda of things I wanted to buy. I kind of had an idea of certain things, but I didn't really know fully what I was going to do. And then after talking to one of the spinners there, she made a really good point. And then I heard a couple people say this, is that when they go, they, because they like to spin wool or fibers, they tend to find a different fiber each festival that they go to. And I thought, well, that's a really great idea. So I actually took her advice and did that. And I'm super glad that I did. I had help with my mom <laughs> and my sister was there too, but my mom really uh, helped me with it because my sister was there for most of the festival on Saturday, but um, then she went to another event uh, that she was going to be doing, a little trip that they're doing. So they left um, in the late afternoon. So my mom stuck around with me until um, I say like 3.30. So we were there most of the day, but we didn't stay the entire time. I usually stay until about four o'clock and then I usually leave on Saturdays because we go to an adjacent uh, to the Fiber Festival. It's also in Allegan. It's like four minutes down the road is uh, Baker Allegan Studios. So I'll talk about that as well here in this video because it, it's connected to the festival, but it's separate, if that makes sense. They do special events during the festival, like special deals and um, things of that nature. And they open up their wool, their wool, their old mill wool warehouse where they sell wool in bulk at wholesale and even better than wholesale pricing. So I, I want to definitely let you guys know about that. So stick around. That'll be at the end of the video if you guys want to hear about that. But back to uh, the fiber festival here. <laughs> so anyway, long and short of it, that was a lot of it. I, got, I was able to talk to people, um, find out more information about the craft of spinning. And uh, I, I know quite a bit about knitting, but spinning is something that is, I have newer to. And talking to a lot of spinners, that was really helpful. And I, I firmly believe that I was able to do that because I went on Friday. If I had only gone on Saturday, I would have missed out on all of that wonderful information. It doesn't mean that I couldn't have gotten some of it, but it's really hard to talk to vendors. I talked to them on Saturday a little bit, but I found I was able to talk to vendors the most on Friday because it was a lot quieter. So maybe Sunday would be like that um, if you just want information, but if you actually want to purchase certain things, um, it's definitely better to go when it's still there. doesn't mean it won't be there Sunday. It's just that it gets picked over um, Saturday, like I said, is very busy. And because I went Friday and went Saturday, I can tell you that there were certain items that I saw on Friday that were like either barely any inventory of that certain items were left or they were gone. So they weren't items I necessarily had to have, but I definitely took note of them. So always keep that in mind. I have found these vendors are very well stocked because they are aware of the amount of people and traffic that come to these festivals. That's something else I gained from talking to some of these vendors is that they really have to stock their merchandise because they just get a lot of foot traffic. They get a lot of people. So that's um, that was very helpful information for me as well as I, you know, work the inner workings of will I do a fiber festival? I don't know. I've never done one, but I'm always thinking about it. And you really have to have a very high inventory. And so, I don't know. <laughs> Will I do one? Maybe. Will I do one this week? Definitely not. <laughs> but it just, it really helped um, learning all that information. So I definitely want to say there were a few booths in particular that I took note of. And I really admired um, their, their style, their the way their booths were constructed, everything about kind of the, the way things were and their willingness to chat with me, willingness to share information, things of that nature. So um, I do just want to give kind of a shout out to a few booths that I thought were really kind of stand out. Uh, one, I believe she is a newer dyer. She's not brand new, but I knew she's newer. It was her first time at the Michigan Fiber Festival and her booth was stunning. Absolutely stunning. It is, um, her color is a little bit different than the colors I tend to dye. I tend to dye lots of rich, darker colors. I do like to have some fun, playful colors in there. She definitely leans towards fun, um, very playful, oh gosh, absolutely beautiful, whimsical colors that are um, just ethereal. I don't even know if that's the right word for it, but if you look her up, 
then you may see what I'm talking about. But her booth was was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And that is the Lair of the Llama. And um, I wanted to buy some of her yarn so bad just because I thought it was so pretty and it made me feel like a little bit like a kid again, the wonder of these beautiful bright colors. But, and not even bright colors, some of them were just beautiful pastels. It was very pretty. But I fought the urge because that was not my goal. My goal was not to be buying hand-dyed yarn this year. I did tell myself no, and I'm, I'm very proud of myself for doing that <laughs> because I did stick to it. So I, I, I did hold true to that one. The other, um, I wrote down a couple different places here. So the other one that I really admired, I believe this was also her first time there at Michigan Fiber Festival because I haven't seen her before. She actually had dual booths. So she had two booths that she purchased. That's a large space. And she took advantage of it in the best way possible. So her booth was called Apothecary Fibers. Apothecary Luxury Fibers, that's the name of it. And it was beautiful. She touched to my aesthetic of rich, deeper colors, so I wanted to buy something from her so badly. <laughs> I did. I fought the urge, though. I did, I did, I did. But she had some beautiful, beautiful fibers, and I loved the style of her booth because it was really open concept. She took advantage of all of her exterior space, and she had her like register up front, but all the area behind her was open. So you could easily approach her and ask her questions and everything, but you didn't feel like you were, con like, that's the hard part um, about going to a fiber festival is that you can easily overpower people. And if someone is a bit more introverted, likes to explore and look at things on their own, um, I don't mind people talking to me and asking me questions uh, like, oh, what are you looking for? Things like that. But I do like to have the time to peruse and look at things because it takes me a minute to, to actually like, take in what I'm looking at. So I really appreciated the fact that she let me look at things and just said, hey, you know, if you have any questions, let me know and let me look. And I didn't feel like I was bombarded and I could take in what I'm looking at because she had a lot of unique fibers there that I just wasn't used to and I wanted to explore it, touch it, see what it's about. So uh, I was, I really appreciated that. So I loved her booth and she is just looks like such a sweet character of a person and she does it full time is my understanding. So really cool. And then, um, the other booth that was actually part of the bunny barn area. So she's more with the farm. Um, she's not, well, yeah, she's, she has, I think she has Angora bunnies at her home, but, um, she had a lot of fun fibers and beautiful fibers to spin. And she took a lot of time to speak with me, which I really appreciated. And I unfortunately didn't purchase something from her this time around, but um, next time I definitely would like to purchase something from her because I'm a little fearful that Angora is going to make me itch. <laughs> I'm just sensitive to certain fibers, you know, everybody is. And But her booth was called Wiggle Stick Designs, really cute name. Um, she does a lot of spinning and they work mainly with Angoras. Um, they're wool, oh not wool, it's hair. Um, they work mainly with that, but um, she did have a little bit of mohair and angora blends, and then she had some other blends that were full-on braids that you could purchase as well, but she had like little samplers, which I kind of liked that, where you could get a small pack of something for a pretty reasonable price, um, you know, if you don't want to be able to put a lot of money towards something that you're not sure about. I really appreciated that and I appreciated again that she took the time to chat with me and that a lot of that again happened on Friday so really taking that time to go on a day that's a little quieter has so many benefits don't be afraid if you're someone who is a bit more introverted and you're like uh they're gonna ask me all kinds of questions and I won't be able to peruse do not worry I was there Friday and there were people there there were quite a few people there and everybody was very nice. I found I had so many kindred spirits. I I went on my own. I didn't have anybody with me and I had a wonderful time. So keep that in mind. They have the food vendors. They're, the food, again, is a little pricier. It is a, a fair, but um, my, I know my, my sister, I didn't actually end up buying a, um, what's it gonna get? Lemonade. I didn't end up buying a lemonade because my sister bought one. They were $8 again. They're definitely pricier. But it was so darn sweet. <laughs> it was so, 
and it was a very large amount that she only drank part of it and then she's like here you can have the rest kind of thing so we shared it which worked out well uh, for both of us but yeah I would just say the food is great they didn't have the the um, kettle corn vendor this year which is kind of crazy they're usually there every year and it's so good so I was kind of bummed that they weren't there because I usually like to pick that up because um, I know my husband enjoys it too so I always like to pick up a bag of that so I was kind of bummed that they weren't there and there wasn't um, really a vendor for like sweets. They had uh, like um, a barbecue place, which was delicious. We went to the barbecue place and then there were a couple other like regular food vendors, but that was it. So it was, it was pretty basic with the food. I mean, obviously you could get pretty much what you wanted, but if you're looking for something sweet, I don't know. I think it was pretty picked over. Um, I don't know. I swore I saw someone with an elephant ear though, and I could not for the life of me figure out where they got it. And I should have asked them, but we kept walking. And then later in the day, my mom and I were looking for it and we could not figure out where they got it from. <laughs> so I have no idea. If you got an elephant ear and you went to Michigan Fire Festival, can you tell me where you got it? So that maybe next year we could figure that out. <laughs> Cause I, uh, that's always kind of a fun little treat when you go to the fire festivals or festivals in general. Anyway, that's like the overview of Michigan Fiber Festival. Highly recommend going two days at least, and like if you're able to, highly recommend it. Otherwise, if you can only go one day, I would say Saturday is the best day. But if you can go two days, I definitely do recommend Friday and Saturday. It's it's worth it. It's so worth it because you can, if you want to get information from people, you can do that. And some of the animals were actually there on on Friday. Just a couple of them. Like the bunnies for sure were there. Um, and then the other critters uh, were showing up primarily on Saturday. But there were quite a few, I'd say at least 10, maybe, well, maybe not 10, like eight sheep that were there. And they had Shetland sheep there. Oh my gosh, you guys. The Shetland sheep arrived actually the day that I went on Friday. But they were in their truck still. I could see them and they were so adorable. So I actually got to see them on Saturday and I went back again later in the day on Saturday and got to see them again and they were so stinking sweet and cute and adorable. Um, if you guys aren't familiar, uh, <laughs> I've mentioned in the past that we are very seriously looking at getting sheep next year. So we're leaning towards the Shetlands. We have a um, a breeder that lives very close to us and yes very very exciting okay anyway <laughs> that's the intro all right now so now after that very long-winded intro um here are some of the merchandise and then we'll get into the yarn and fiber and i'm so excited okay so i got um a three-quarter sleeve i love my three-quarter sleeve that my sister got me a couple years back i think it was the first fiber festival that we went to actually um she purchased a three-quarter sleeve for me, so I got a different colored one with, of course, this year's little um, black nose um, sheep on the front and the spinning wheel, and of course, it says Michigan Fiber Festival on it, and it's very comfortable. I love their merchandise. It's very fairly priced, and it's wonderful, so I got this, and then I also purchased a couple more because I like supporting them. I love the Fiber Festival. I got one of their little dresses. I picked it up primarily as a sleeping dress, like a little nightgown. Um, it's very cute. Has the, um, there we go, Michigan Fiber Festival logo on the bottom here. The little critters. So I purchased that. And then I purchased this one. I actually, I usually like to, to get a bag if possible. And I actually went and got the nicer bag this year. So this is, um, I don't know what they called it something tote. They have a very limited amount of them. Um, I went with the green one and it has our little black nose on there and it's a very nice tote. It's lined with a, very, a nice lining. It has a zipper pouch for like notions and such and it has a magnet closure and I could easily put a sweater in this bag. Easily. Sweater project. So that was, I think, the most expensive item out of all of them that I purchased, but it was still, I want to say, under $20. So if you can definitely go on their website, michiganfiberfestival.org, I think. If you search Michigan Fiber Festival, it's the, like the first 
uh, link that shows up. Follow that link and they do have merchandise on there. I don't know how much is left. It gets picked over heavily at the festival. Um, I went by the merchandise table and I saw how quickly that thing emptied and it was crazy by the end of day Saturday. It is pretty much empty. So if you go on Sunday, you have very slim pickings when it comes to merchandise. Just letting you know that. Again, if you want merchandise, definitely go Fridays or Saturday, Friday or Saturday to get merchandise because it goes very quickly. All right, so we're going to get into all of the yarny goodness and fiber goodness, but we're going to start with the fleeces first. I purchased fleeces, you guys. Oh my gosh. So one of my goals this year was to go by the farm stands at the, um, the festival. And I actually also wanted to go to the fleece sale. And I did go by the fleece sale. I checked it out on Saturday and I um, did look at all the pricing and I, I realized they are more heavily skirted fleeces. Okay, I do realize that. Their pricing was a lot higher. So it reflected the fact that these animals may have obviously had more care done for them when it comes to keeping them clean. Um, also skirting, like I said, skirting the fleece and doing all that was reflected in the price. And so I actually did not partake in buying a fleece from the fleece sale. There were a lot of beautiful fleeces, don't get me wrong, but I actually did not partake. And a lot of that is because I purchased a fleece on Friday. And so this is one of the reasons I like going Friday. So I find a lot of the fleeces that I tend to gravitate towards lately, I don't know why, but apparently everybody else has a similar idea. <laughs> but a lot of the fleeces I tend to gravitate towards um, have been going quickly. And I usually miss out. I usually miss out on them. So this time around when I... I saw a beautiful fleece at one of the stands for the life of me. I cannot remember the name of it. It was a mill. I can see if I can figure it out. I've got my little thing here. I should have looked that up first. You know what? It doesn't matter because it's from a farm. So I'll tell you the farm that it's associated with. Because uh, the way this stand was set up, it was a mill. And they must have had a deal with farmers from that, that supply their mill that they would sell some of their raw fleeces, which was really nice that they did that. I'm glad they did. Um, however, it's tricky to buy fleeces from this person because I checked out their website because I loved the fleece so much that I got. I thought, oh, I'll check out their website to see like if they sell them on their website and if the pricing is different. But I will tell you, they didn't have any fleeces listed on their website. There was hardly any information about their sheep. So really, you could probably email them and then find out information. But here you go. All right, so we're going to start with the fleece that I found on Friday, which I was so excited about. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, so the first fleece that I purchased um, is this beauty. So it was from Patchwork Acres Farm. And... They do have a website, and this is a CVM fleece. So this is a new-to-me uh, breed. I've heard about it a lot. There's a lot of people that work with CVM. Apparently, it's becoming more popular in the spinning community, but I just... It was new to me, and I got the raw fleece. This is an extremely raw fleece. It, they did note on here it is uncoated, so they were an uncoated sheep, but this was also a very... I want to say that from what I saw, I'm going to guess they shorn, shorn, the sheep was shorn and they took that fleece and just shoved it right in a bag <laughs> because they left like the tail end, like all the areas that when it's lightly skirted are usually removed. It was not removed. So I'm really going to guess this was the complete raw fleece, but she charged a very reasonable amount um, for it. So I'm like, Hey, I'm going to go for it. I saw it near the beginning when I got into the festival and then by the end of day Friday before I left I was still thinking about it and I'm like you know what I'm, I'm gonna buy I, I was dreaming about it all day as I was walking around and I, I felt like I was gonna very much regret leaving without it so I grabbed it because I I've touched other CVM fleeces that were in the same booth and this was the softest out of all of them so I really and, it, and because of the color as you will see it is a beautiful gray 
This is a CVM. So a true CVM is the California Variegated Mutant. This, I've learned all about this. Um, that means that they are not a, they are a um, improved breed. So they are a mix of two different breeds. Um, the Romadale is the whiter fleece. It's a white fleece. But the CVM is a multicolor fleece. So this, this fleece does have multiple colors. It leans towards multiple grays. There's even a very dark gray in here. And then of course the majority is a light to medium gray. And there is even some cream in this fleece, just a little bit, um, but the majority is gray. It's absolutely beautiful. As you can see, this is, these are the tips here, but this is the actual underside. So if you are first time buying a fleece, I do recommend, and most, most people that are experienced with selling fleece tend to do this. They will turn it inside out. They, they turn the tips in and roll it up. One, it looks a lot nicer because the inside is the part that's against the skin. So there's not like a bunch of garbage on it. You know, not a CVM, not a lot of vegetable matter. But um, then, and you also then can see the natural color of the fleece. So the natural color when this is washed is going to be in these staples right here, a very light gray. And then up here, it'll be just like more, a little bit, it's not even just gray. It almost leans itself towards like a, not even a moret, uh, a f like well, kind of, it's like a gray, light gray brown in here. It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> absolutely beautiful and smells wonderful because it's wonderfully sheepy but I was really excited by this fleece as you can see <laughs> so I, I snatched it up because anytime I see CVM fleeces um, certain vent certain people that I follow that sell fleeces that are raw they tend to be snatched up right away and I always miss out so I just I did I purchased it I purchased it at the end of the day Friday but I still bought it so that was a six pound fleece this is the second biggest fleece I've ever going to be processing. It is very clean though, I have to say. I looked it over, nothing strange. Um, there, of course, other than the fact that the kind of poopy bits <laughs> had to be removed from the rear area of the fleece, but otherwise the fleece is, very, is in really good shape. Very greasy, I will tell you that. I'm not familiar with CVM very much, but there's quite a bit of grease in this fleece. So trying to clean it will take some time, but it will be well worth it. I also feel like there'll be a nice amount of grease still left in the fleece when I process it. And I love spinning fleeces that have a little bit of lanolin left in them because they it really is wonderful to work with, especially as a newer spinner. It helps in the spinning process. So that's my CVM fleece. That was the first purchase that I made. And that was the, the purchase that opened the gate of purchases, as I put it. So... I purchased one other thing on Friday when I got there, and um, I will talk about that in a minute, but the other fleece that I purchased, um, my mom helped me with because I was looking around at people that had hand dyed yarn, and I was trying to find raw fleece, let's see, not raw, um, untreated spun wool, so cleaned but spun wool that had mohair in it. I didn't need it to necessarily be pure mohair. It could be mohair silk, usually that's what it is, uh, or something other than that. But I was looking around and I saw some hand dye. I didn't, I saw one actually, that was the craziest thing. I found very few vendors that were selling mohair. I don't know what's going on. Is it like everybody's going towards alpaca? That's totally fine, I love alpaca. But if you, if you know, I just thought that was strange. There weren't that many dyers that were working with mohair, which was so strange to me. I did see one vendor, but most of them were um, tonal. Nothing wrong with that. I wanted something variegated or like speckled because I wanted something along those lines if I'm going to be testing it. So I decided, well, why don't I go back to the bunny barn? Because the bunny barn had... Um, fleeces for sale, mohair fleeces. And so I could just get a whole fleece, which is a bunch of mohair and spin it up. There's a risk there because mohair might make me itch, but I don't think it's going to because I have some vintage mohair. This is very old, like very old. I think it was probably from the seventies. 
things from the 70s. Because my mom gave it to me. I mean, she's had it for a very long time. This is before I was born. Way before I was born. So, yeah. I'm pretty certain that it's from the 70s at least. And it's prickly feeling, but I have heard that older mohair, especially from like that time period, is not as fine of a mohair mohair as the mohair that we tend to produce nowadays so i was like well i'm gonna give it a try i am going to literally care to the <laughs> like set set free here and just do it so i picked up a fleece i looked at a bunch of fleeces at this one booth so it is high tower farm and she primarily does angora but she did have some fleeces of mohair and she did have some mohair angora blends so initially i looked at her yarn because she had mohair angora blended yarn but i'm like i think angora will make me itch because i swear i had an angora sweater as a teenager and it made me itch <laughs> i swear so i just kept thinking i do not want to try something with angora because if i'm trying to test the mohair and i itch i might think it's the mohair but it might actually be the angora so my goal was okay find something that's either just pure mohair or something that's mohair with something i know that won't bother me silk won't bother me merino won't bother me <laughs> so i was looking and looking and looking i could not find it i couldn't find it it was everything she had was mohair and angora blend and i'm like well, that's just not gonna work it's not gonna work so what I ended up going with is the fleece that is Sault Ste. Marie. I think that's how you say it. If I'm saying it wrong. It's in the UP. It's, but I picked up her fleece. So it is a kid mohair fleece. So that's supposed to be quite soft. Um, it's definitely in the grease as you, as you would. I say that with the whole sheep idea, but... Um, it's a beautiful fleece. It's kind of, um, I would say it, it's a, it's not a white fleece. It has like a very light reddish hue to it. Very light, like reddish and cream blend. It's absolutely beautiful. So I feel like when this gets added to something, if it was added to a white wool, it's going to give it this halo of um, like very light reddish brown. I think it's going to be absolutely beautiful. So my goal is to, I have a ridiculous amount of merino that I've washed of fleeces and um, my husband is working on a drum carter for me. So my goal is to take the merino that I have and blend it with the mohair and that way I will be able to test out the trueness of how it will feel to wear mohair. <laughs> but there you have it. So I got a mohair fleece. Again, reasonably priced. Obviously more expensive than the sheep fleece. That fleece, um, like I said, the first one's eight pounds. This one is two and three quarter pounds, so about three pounds fleece. And it was um, definitely more expensive, but still a very good deal. She actually had it on sale. So um, I looked at it and I'm like, it's actually on sale. Oh my gosh. So I picked it up. <laughs> I figured, why not? Why not? You know, I, I'm just, I'm all for the experimenting right now. And I'm just going to do it. I'm having so much fun spinning. So there we go. So those are the two fleeces I got. So obviously when I picked up my CVM fleece on Friday, I knew that I didn't necessarily have to buy a fleece from the um, fleece sale that was going on. And that's the thing I found. So if you're someone looking for a fleece, definitely check out the fleece sale when you go to the fiber festivals. Please don't let me talk you out of it. But just remember, they're going to be more expensive. However, they will be more cleaned when it comes to that. So I'm willing to put more of the work into cleaning it. I don't know. It's part of the whole process for me. <laughs> I'm going to have to clean it regardless. So I really don't care if I have to put just a smidge more work into cleaning it because I'll get the better price for it, for me at least, um, for the budget. 
So I recommend checking out the farm stands at Fiber Festivals. A lot of them will have their fleeces for sale there. They may not be as heavily um, uh, scoured and all that. You know, like when that's scoured, they're usually not scoured unless it says cleaned. If it says a cleaned fleece or scoured fleece, it's actually cleaned. And again, you will pay for that. So they do have them. I saw many booths that did. There's a lot of alpaca. There were many, many booths that had cleaned fleeces for sale, but there were quite a few that had raw fleeces. And I tell you what, look at all your booths before you purchase things because there were booths that had their pricing way up here and there were booths that had it in my range. And you just have to kind of look around. And the, I always say that because if you don't look around first, you, yeah, you might find something that you really like and I get it. But chances are you're going to spend a lot more money than if you found something just as nice at a different booth. So just keep that in mind, um, especially with raw fleeces. It varies in price quite a bit. Uh, if you look online and look at the price of whatever breed you're looking at, you will see that it can go from $10 a pound up to like $30 a pound, $45 a pound. I kid you not, some, <laughs> I kid you not with mohair. Some mohair will run like $40 a pound. This did not, thank God. <laughs> but there are some that will charge that much per pound. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> All right, I am. this is gonna be a long video, you guys. Bear with me. If you stick with me the whole time, that's awesome. But if you need to like come back a different day, I understand. <laughs> so that was... Um, so the first one's Peaches, this was Sault Ste. Marie, and then now we're going to go into the la last two items that I purchased from the actual festival. Everything else I actually purchased from Baker Studio, Baker Elegant Studio <laughs> and, and Old Mill Yarn. So the last two items I purchased, this was also from a farm booth. This is um, a Fiat Lux Fibers. Just Emma. It is 90% Pygora, 10% Merino. It's a three ply at 250 yards because I really wanted to just try Pygora goat. I'm not familiar with it. It's a whole new thing to me. I will tell you, I held this up to my neck and I could tell right away this would not be something I would want against my neck region. That's my most sensitive area when it comes to prickle factor that this no way this would I would itch the living daylights out of my neck I also I did this when I got home I put it against my like stomach and this does not itch my stomach so that's good and it does not like tickle my feet my feet are not very sensitive so I my goal is to make a pair of beautiful very warm luxurious <laughs> socks um, with this beautiful fiber so that I can just Play with it and it's beautiful it's a three ply so I think this will be great for socks it's also Pygora they are similar to the Angora where they have long fibers but they're not as soft um, if you're a Pygora owner don't take offense to this but to me they don't feel as soft as um, an Angora goat which they are for the mohair so Angora is mohair uh, Pygora is they're really cute little um, goats but they tend to have um, it's just a different it's a different hair it just is so I wanted to test it out and I loved it they had a wonderful little farm stand right next to the, the animals a lot of times the farm stands are next to the animals so definitely check by this is again the natural fiber I'm guessing based off of this it says just Emma I'm guessing it was just Emma's beautiful pagora and um, blended with some merino so it's net her natural color which is so pretty it's kind of a, a like a light gray with a little bit of a fawn color going on very beautiful so I snatched up one of those and then I also got some wool wash so this is legitimate wool wash so you don't want to you really just want to use this with wool because it has lanolin in it. That is the first ingredient listed. So that is, I always have learned, if it's the first ingredient listed, it should be the ingredient that there is the most of in your product. Um, 
So this is the Soapy U. She was so incredibly sweet. She talked to me for quite a bit and explained her whole process with these soaps and I'm very excited to use them. <laughs> mm, she has a special deal going on if you buy two of them. So I did buy two. Uh, oh my gosh, so many of her scents were wonderful. But I got Island Fruit and they look exactly the same, but they each one comes with their little bag. So once you're done using it, you just hang it up and it'll air dry. The air will go through, it will dry, and then you just use it the next time. And I'm really excited. I've never used solid wool wash. I've always used liquid. And it's, um, again, a no rinse, which is awesome. This one is um, vanilla cashmere. Ugh, so good. It's like vanilla with an extra, like something extra. That's how she said it. And I'm like, that's exactly what it smells like. Vanilla with something extra. And yeah, you just let it dry and wonderful. No rinse and I'm excited, so excited. She also has unscented if you're someone sensitive to smells. So definitely check her out. She has um, an Etsy website, the Soapy U. U as an E-W-E. <laughs> All right, now we're going to get into the fair adjacent items. So Michigan Fire Festival, as I said, is massive and there was so much to see but I really wanted to buy um, either items for spinning that were the raw wool items or items that were spun from farms and obviously the wool wash that was my goal and that is what I found and I'm really happy I did not go crazy buying a bunch of items there and I did not buy any hand dyed which I'm proud of myself because as a hand dyer I sometimes can gravitate towards it because just I love it and even though it's nice to support other hand dyed yarn um, independent dyers it is also great to support the farms that they get we get the wool from so I really wanted to do that I wanted to support the farms so I did and I'm really glad I did so again the these are fair adjacent so this is Baker Allegan Studios and Old Mill Yarn so this is really special in case you aren't familiar with Old Mill Yarn it is, um, he basically, the co-owner of Baker Studio, Baker Allegan Studio <laughs> is, um, oh boy, I wonder if my video is getting weird because it just started kind of getting crazy. All right, we're good. I think we're good. <laughs> Hopefully this won't be bad because the video is so long. I'm sorry, guys. We'll try to wrap this up here. Um, this might end up being super long. Oh my gosh. All right. The co-owner, they have Old Mill Yarn. A lot of this is milled yarn that they had purchased and then they sell it only during Michigan Fiber Festival that whole weekend and it's at a very discounted price. So discounted, in fact, it is better than wholesale. And what I mean by that is he had all the wool. So if you, any of the wool, so they had it all kind of divvied out. And if you ask him what it is, he'll tell you, which was so awesome. But he had a bunch of wool at two dollars a pound you guys yes you heard me correct two dollars a pound for wool and that's any wool that included merino that included merino <laughs> just want to make sure you guys hear that so if you have never been to the old mill yarns during the michigan fiber festival you should totally check it out i feel like i am giving away a trade secret here because i go there every year and it's so special but I really wanted to let you know, in case you are a weaver or something, you would really appreciate this, but you don't have to be a weaver to appreciate it. They do have a lot of rug wool, a lot of rug wool. However, if you ask him where certain wools are or products, he will, he will share that with you. So I went there Friday and I did pick up some items while I was there Friday, but then I came back on Saturday with my mom and picked up a bunch more and I got an amazing deal on all this yarn. So. I asked him, because I remember a year ago, he had some giant skeins of yarn. I'll show you what I mean by a giant skein of yarn. <laughs> this is a giant skein of yarn. <laughs> and I asked him if he still had any giant skeins of yarn. And he's, because I didn't see any when I looked around. And this is why it pays to ask you guys. And he said, well, yes, actually I do. But I said, the, the one I saw on, on Friday was, isn't here anymore. And I just wondered if you sold it. And he said, yes, I sold it, but that was rug wool. He said, I have some Merino if you're interested. 
and I have a merino cashmere. And I was like, oh my gosh. Yes, I'm interested. <laughs> so he brought it. It was part of his stash. I guess he kept them aside because he said he was um, going to do something with them. He wanted to have... Um, I don't know if he knits. It didn't sound like he knitted, but he wanted his wife to knit him up a sweater out of them. And at least, um, if not one, I would definitely say two sweaters because this is more than enough to make two sweaters. And he, uh, he, he brought it so that I could buy it if I wanted, and I totally snatched it. So I have two giant skeins of merino, which I am planning on dyeing both of these. So this one is your pure white merino, your typical. I mean, it's so white, it's being blasted out by the light. <laughs> so your typical white merino, giant skein though, not typical because it's giant. Um, so I've got that one and then I've got this one, which is like a camel color, which I am definitely debating dying over because I don't know I kind of love the idea of dying it but I got a bunch of colors this time around that I could dye if I want to you know who knows but yes so I got two giant skeins of merino goodness I will share I hope with like no judgment how much I spent on this wool from Old Mill Yarn because I have to tell you guys Please don't judge me with how much I spent, but also like I want to share that because when you see how much I got and you find out the price, you're going to probably lose your mind. Just just saying that right now. Okay, so this is the one scene of merino cashmere that I got. A lot of these are like um, worsted. I guess he said worsted weight. This one's worsted weight. Beautiful. I've never worked with cashmere. Well, I guess I have worked with cashmere, um, but my MCN, so my merino cashmere nylon blends, I have worked with it, but that is very specific to Advent. Like I don't normally carry merino cashmere nylon because it is an expensive base. So I just don't usually do that. So I definitely don't buy merino cashmere for myself. <laughs> so this was a big treat. So I, uh, I did get that. He also had this stash to side because it's beautiful. And it is. It's again kind of a light, not exactly camel color, it's, but it's creamy. It's beautiful. So I'll either make something this color or I may die over this because oh, it's gorgeous. So a lot of these are mill ends. So this is not a full um, cone and a lot of them they removed the cones out of it which genius because the thing is when you buy it on the cone you're paying for the weight he charges by weight so you're paying for the weight of the cone no cone you're not paying for the cone you're just paying for the wool so he kept this in a separate bag I'm gonna keep it in a separate bag to remind myself that this is my beautiful cashmere blend very fancy the other very fancy one that I purchased is this gorgeous, um, 602020, so it is 60% superwash merino, 20% alpaca, and 20% nylon. Um, does it sound familiar? <laughs> that is like my, um, my alpaca base that I carry, and I call it alpaca base, but I say that again because I like to reiterate. Um, this is fox gray is what the name of it is. It's a beautiful gray blue color. It's so pretty. I would read this as almost blue, but it is a gray. But it's a blue gray and it's stunning. This is definitely lace weight. Very, very fine. Oop, and you can see there's a halo from the alpaca. Very soft. Um, yeah, I was thinking I could hold it like double and make something with it. I think it's just beautiful. And while this is a small cone, it is mighty. That is a lot of yardage. I mean, a lot. Just so you guys know, all of these that I've been showing you are sweaters quantities. Like none, uh, none of the cones, and I should say mill ends that I purchased, none of them are less than a sweaters quantity. 
And then we have a couple of stunners here. This is another beauty. These are all merinos. This is a merino. Again, this is like a creamy taupe, a very light taupe. And just so you guys can get an idea of how big this is, this is my head. <laughs> okay, it's huge. They're enormous. And then this is another beauty, another uh, taupey gray color. This is a two ply. You can see, and most of these are fingering weight. Um, I did have that lace weight, but the majority of these are fingering or worsted weight. So, and the worsted I would say is almost borderline light worsted, but this is, I would, he, he said like some of these, he said worsted and I'm thinking, I don't know. I would say this is a fingering weight to me. This is fingering as a knitter. This is a fingering weight. Again, this is my head. <laughs> And then I've got this beauty. This is a Milland. This is another, like, a chocolatey gray almost. It has almost a warm, it's a like warm gray. It's got a, a warmth to it. Absolutely beautiful. Again, two-ply. Absolutely stunning. Super, super soft. My goodness, butter. Soft. And they had a massive crate of this type of wool. Actually, a couple, a couple crates. All right. <laughs> then this one here again two ply beautiful merino super soft massive you guys massive easily a sweater probably two sweaters I, I kid you not probably two sweaters so that and last but certainly not least oof from old mill yarn is this massive <laughs> it's huge look at the size of this thing this was i think i can't remember if it was five dollars a pound i don't know but this one's a whole cone this was a whole cone and it is a um, cotton blend cotton and i think i'm trying to think of what else it is this stuff's fascinating. So you can't tell from this, but when this is actually knit into a fabric, it stretch, it's stretchy. It's the craziest thing. Um, my goal with this, not only I could make something with it, but um, I definitely thought using this for tags, like, you know, for my tags would be really cute. I like to have fun um, with my tags and everything. And that was kind of my main goal, but obviously I've got more than enough to make like a little top bag. I can make all kinds of things with this. Um, I definitely think being able to make something with this, I love the red and white, but even like making a top or something out of this and then dyeing it a color would be really good too. But yeah, I think the possibilities are endless. I absolutely love it. It's soft cotton, very soft cotton. Um, I don't think it says... Yeah, it's kind of a berry red actually it's not like red red it's like a berry red but it's a slub and it doesn't say yeah it's cotton and something else but oh spandex yeah it's cotton slub and spandex so it has the stretch in it it's so crazy it's absolutely crazy but really soft and fun so all of that that i just showed you from old mill yarn all of that so let's see let's let's see for ourselves here we've got at least one two three four five six seven eight nine let's round to ten possibly eleven could be more sweater quantities that's that's a lot of sweaters that's a lot of sweaters and be prepared okay I'm gonna let's let's think about this for a second how much do you spend on yarn for one sweater shall we most of the time, um, the best deal I've ever found for a sweater with wool, um, if you're looking at raw wool, I look at like Plutalope. Plutalope is very reasonable. It's usually around $9 a plate. And I think um, my very best deal that I've ever got, because it was on sale from Istex, or Alifos, it was Alifos, um, I think... I got a deal where they were 
even cheaper and I think my sweaters quantity was around $60. We're gonna say $60 for a sweaters quantity of yarn. That's the best deal I have ever found on a sweaters quantity of yarn. So to reiterate, I think I said it's around 11 sweaters worth of yarn. I would say it's more than that actually, it depends on your size, but we're gonna say if every sweater's a large and I've got 11 sweaters. The amount that I spent on this is is less. <laughs> I I kid you not. I kid you not. It it would be less than ten dollars a sweater. Yeah, you heard that right. Less than ten dollars a sweater. Now, I don't know about you, but you need to go to the next <laughs> Michigan Fiber Festival. <laughs> For old mill yarn because it is more than worth it. That alone would be worth the drive. <laughs> it is an amazing deal. There was a woman that came back there and she had said she already bought an entire um, cart of wool. She definitely does um, uh, carpets because she was getting carpet wool. But I mean two dollars a pound you guys. Two dollars a pound. That's a lot of wool. I know. I know, right? You're going, why didn't I go? You're kicking yourself, aren't you? Don't, don't kick yourself. Go next year. They'll do it again. He said he was going to do it again. So next year, look up Michigan Fire Festival, pay attention to when the dates are, put it on your calendar so you don't forget it because less than $10 a sweater. Okay. There, enough. <laughs> For Merino. Okay, merino, that's so soft. Most everyone can wear merino, most. I say most because some people say they're allergic to all wool. I don't know if I agree with that, <laughs> but there you go. All right, and last but certainly not least, my adjacent, which is not something that you guys can go to, but um, my mom actually brought me some wool. And so I just wanted to share it because it, it was gifted to me during Michigan Fire Festival. And she found it actually at thrift stores. So this is why I, I preach about thrift stores so much. Yes, it sometimes can be hard to find really nice wool, but sometimes you can score and you can score big and she scored huge. So um, she found, ooh, first three skeins of shepherd's wool. So shepherd's wool is out of, um, Stonehenge Fiber Mill is out of Michigan and they do wonderful spun wool. This is merino, super, super soft, worsted weight. And crazily enough, I have a, I have a skein of this yarn or very similar to it. This they did not label specifically as milk chocolate. So I think this might be a, like um, a one-off where they like spun because it says NA for color. So they probably just spun it up and then this was that colorway and I have one that's very similar to this. It's called milk chocolate. It's just slightly different. So it's similar enough that I feel like if I alternated or I don't know, use it on the cuffs, I have no idea, that I'd be able to easily make a sweater out of this. And I'm very excited about that because I only had one left for my last sweater. And I was like, what am I gonna do with it? Make another sweater. And actually I could probably make another sweater out of these three, but I think I used four skeins. So I'll be using that last skein. So I have an entire sweater quantity of shepherd's wool, huge. She found this beautiful stuff, which I've never worked with it. It's by Istex, speaking of Plutolopi. Um, by Istex, this is Einband. It is their lace weight. I've never worked with it. It's a beautiful color. Uh, it's kind of a reddish purple. Stunning. She found this at the thrift store. These were all the same day. She found all this together. Some person was cleaning out their yarn and I got so lucky. All right, um, to stick with our uh, Iztex, <laughs> she got a sweaters quantity of Let Lopi in, let's see, one, two, three, four, five colors. So there's one colorway the majority. This is definitely sweater's quantity. This is a very pretty color. It's light brown. Colorway is 1420. It's 
It's a light brown. So we've got six of those. And then, actually, there's more colors than that. Um, these, because these are two different ones. This beautiful one here, which is this darker red. Then there's also, which is colorway 14.9. Then we have 94.31, which is a more like a warmer red. This is a cooler red. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> We're well over an hour, guys. If you're still with me, you guys are amazing. <laughs> We've got this colorway, which is 54. Nice creamy color. Oh, wait, this is two different colors. This is 54, which is like a, a creamy, this is a gray-white color. And then we've got this one, which is 86. Two of this one. And so this was definitely someone's sweater's quantity of yarn. Based on what I'm seeing here, I'm guessing they were going to make a colorwork sweater. And then this is 1411, which is an absolutely gorgeous yellow. And this is crazy, you guys. The same day that she got all of this wool that she found, I had gone to my thrift store, got two pattern books for a dollar. I got a lopey. I got a Lopi pattern book. Seriously. I don't know. When things are on the nose sometimes, sometimes they are on the nose. And these are beautiful colorwork sweaters. Absolutely beautiful. I have no idea which one I'm going to make, but I kind of want to make one because Lopi sweaters and I just got a bunch of Lopi. I know. Crazy, right? Crazy. It's crazy. And last but certainly not least, um, Cascade Yarns Ecological Wool. And this is Peruvian Highland Wool, 100% Peruvian Highland Wool. And this is super fluffy. Like, I think this is border. Is it considered? I mean, it looks like it's bulky weight. Needle size 10. So I would put that as bulky weight. I don't think it's like super bulky, but definitely bulky. All of this. Beautiful, right? Stunning. The colorway is, what does it say? I don't know. Oh, it's shade 8019. There you go. I'm not familiar with this eco wool, ecological wool. It's supposed to be 250 grams, so 478 yards. So that's a decent amount of yardage there for that type of, I mean, like I could probably, I could actually make something with this, <laughs> well, you know, like, a, I mean, a substantial object easily could make a hat and mittens maybe, or like a hat and a cowl. I have no idea. But there you go. Again, a beautiful neutral. Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh man, you guys, I haven't talked that long before. Holy cow, I'm winded. I'm sure you guys are tired of listening to me speak as well. But there you go. That is what I found at the weekend of Michigan Fire Festival in Allegan, Allegan, Michigan, at the Allegan County Fairgrounds. Highly recommend Michigan Fire Festival. If you have never gone and you live in the area and you go guys it's five dollars a day and if you decide to go for two days or the like the weekend pass that's what i did i got the weekend pass it was ten dollars ten dollars and you could go friday saturday and sunday if you wanted so that's a great deal and then definitely definitely check out old mill yarn they do sell online they do sell it online and it is a good deal online but the best sale that they have where they open up the warehouse where you can just shop till you drop, that is only during Michigan Fiber Festival. And it is, like I said, an amazing deal. $10 a sweater worth of yarn, for me at least. $10. I know. And technically that could be a bigger sweater 
for each one because I was very, um, I was not very generous with the amount of sweaters I can make. Like I, I know I can make more sweaters than 11 based off of the little I'm seeing here. $10. I know. I'm still mind blown <laughs> when I think about it like that. So I hope you guys are doing well. I know I just chatted with you recently posting a video on Thursday, but I wanted to put this up ASAP because um, unfortunately you would have missed out on the Fiber Festival this year, but next year definitely check it out and put it on your calendar. If you live outside of the area, definitely check it out. Like if it's not that far for you, even if it's, even if it's a bit of a drive. Elegant, like Michigan is a beautiful state to visit, so I'm just going to keep plugging that. I love Michigan. I moved here from Chicago, Illinois. Well, I used to live an hour north of Chicago in Illinois, and I grew up in Illinois. I've spent most of my life in Illinois, but I've now been here, I think, over 13 years now, like 14 years. I love it here. Absolutely love it here. My husband grew up here. We love Michigan, so I can't say enough nice things about Michigan. There is so much to see and explore. Lots of state parks. The lake, Lake Michigan, is beautiful. So I'm just saying, if you're not from the area and you're looking for an excuse to come visit Michigan, which you shouldn't need one, it's a wonderful place. <laughs> but I'm just saying, coming during the Michigan Fiber Festival, you could go to the festival, which is amazing, but then you can also explore the area, and it's wonderful. So... Don't miss out next year. Definitely check out Old Mill Yarns. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. And I will catch up with you soon. Take care. Bye.